Joining us now is Sky News contributor Michael Kroger. Michael, thank you for joining us on Election Day. Votes are right now being counted and polls are indicating that it's close. This election will, of course, have consequences for countries right around the world. But what would a Trump victory mean for the conflict in the Middle East? Well, it's going to have very decisive uh, impacts uh, in two regions. One is Middle East, particularly Iran, and then, of course, Russia. What we know about Trump is this. He's not ill-prepared. He's not, you know, not, not stopping using Mer American military power. He's happy to do that, as he killed Baghdadi in 2019 in Syria. He killed off ISIS with uh, strong, uh, you know, American military use in, uh, in Iraq and Syria. Uh, in 19. He, he's not, you know, unprepared to use that might, but he doesn't like long extended wars. So I think what he'll do is he'll say to the Iranians, stop funding Hezbollah, Hamas and the Houthis. He will increase sanctions on Iran. He will try and drive the um, Iranian economy uh, downhill. He'll put massive internal pressure on the Iranian government. Uh, all of those things, of course, will help in the Middle East, because if there's a lack of support for Hezbollah, Hezbollah and Hamas in particular, that weakens the the you know the Iranian proxy. So ultimately, that will help lead to peace in the Middle East if if these people are not being supported by Iran. So I think his number one target will be the government in Iran. Mike, what would the election? What impact will it have here for us here in Australia? I think the truth is it'll have little impact. Um, the Australian government and the American government's relationship endures beyond who the president is. They come and go. Prime ministers and governments in Australia come and go. The relationship is very strong for military and trade basis. We're both established democracies. We've had a relationship going back decades, of course. So, quite frankly, I don't think the relationship will change. The only cog in the wheel might be Kevin Rudd, the Australian ambassador, who obviously Trump's people don't like. And as we saw on Erin Molan's show last week... Um, Trump's daughter-in-law made it very clear she knows exactly who Kevin Rudd is and she doesn't like him. So you can expect that uh, Rudd will get the cold shoulder if uh, Donald Trump wins in America today. If Kamala Harris gets in, what type of president can we expect? Because she's flip-flopped on so many issues. What are we actually going to get? Look, I think you'll get a president who's on the job training, which is what you can't do in a US president. You need someone that knows how the world works. Um, Harris was dragged some from obscurity in uh, San Francisco. Um, she was, quite frankly, a hopeless vice president. Uh, though I love those vox pops where people are asked, yes, but what are her achievements? No one in the streets can name a single achievement of Kamala Harris's as vice president. Uh, her, her answers to questions on the economy are embarrassing. So I think a, a very inexperienced, lacklustre president who will be in the hands of the people around her, the question will be, as it has been under Biden, who is actually running the country? What are her core beliefs on the Middle East? She seems to be on everyone's side. What does she think about Russia, the invasion of the Ukraine? No idea. She confused North Korea and South Korea in that famous muck-up interview she did at the airport. So I really don't think Harris will be a great uh, president at all. I think the world will be hanging on to its hat. A CNN exit poll has just dropped and it found that 75% of Americans are not happy with the way things are going in the United States today. How bad is that as a reflection of, of who's in power at the moment when we've got Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? Well, it's terrible. I mean, that, that, that is the number one most important indicator of whether a president will be a president's team in this case, her, will be re-elected. Uh, never before has there been a presidential candidate with such low approval ratings, i.e. the right direction, wrong direction track, uh, that wins elections. So that is the main reason you tend to think that Harris won't win, uh, because most three-quarters of Americans think the country's going in the wrong direction. Look, well, if they think that, why would they vote for Harris? The record's terrible. Biden's record has been very poor. And uh, if she wins today, as I said, hang on to your hat. If Donald Trump loses fairly, what can we expect to happen? And I suppose that the movement that he's created. That's a very good question. Uh, he's already made it very clear this morning that he doesn't want people to cause trouble as long as he's lost fairly, uh, which is always his rejoinder. So we'll have to see what happens with the legal actions that take place. Already this morning, we've had a report of an Australian who's lived in Washington, D.C. for six weeks. He tried out the American system. He walked straight into a polling booth, produced evidence of his residency and was given a ballot paper. 
even though he's not an American citizen and he's not entitled to vote, he then handed the ballot paper back. So, I, you know, there are questions about the American election process that someone can walk in and be given a ballot. And obviously, these are the things that Trump complains about. Mm. Look, Joe Biden, he's caused some headaches for Kamala Harris in recent days. He called Trump supporters garbage and nearly every time he opens his mouth, there's a gaffe. Has he done this deliberately? Are we going to see Joe Biden pop up again? No, I don't think so. Uh, look, he's a, he's a man with early stage dementia. I'm sure he's not doing it deliberately, although obviously he's still incredibly angry that they turfed him out. But his performance should reassure him that they made the right decision in turfing him out. Just imagine if Joe Biden had been the candidate for the last three months and was wanting another four years in the White House. That was preposterous. It was ridiculous. Of course, he should have gone. But Kamala Harris and others covered up his dementia for years. And it wasn't until that presidential debate gap that people in America realised that this guy was, you know, a brick short of the full load. So, so uh, no, I don't think he's doing it deliberately. That's just him. He's an old man. We're all getting to that stage. He's got early stage dementia. He hasn't been running the country for a long time, obviously. And no one knows who's running America, quite frankly. Sky News contributor Michael Kroger, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Pleasure, Gab.